In the past, oh sorry, what up cucks? In the past, Kevin Nash one time in TNA in a throwaway episode came out during an X Division Battle Royal. He hit the big boot on some jabroni and then he powerbombed another one. He got a chair and he sat in the ring. Oh, he didn't sit in the ring in this one. And he, he got the mic, right? One of the guys in the Battle Royal was called Incognito. And Kevin Nash takes the mic and he says, was this an incognito battle royal or was one of those guys called incognito? Because I didn't recognize anyone in this royal in this battle royal, right? And Kevin Nash then proceeded to start a very entertaining storyline where he completely buries the X, the X Division as being little man vanilla midget jobbers. And that's what I'm here to discuss today. The concept of the vanilla midget, right? Now, a lot of people, quite frankly, don't have the intelligence of your boy, the hater, to talk about the two components of being a vanilla midget. First, we have the first element, vanilla. Then we have the second element, midget. Now I know you're thinking, hater, we all understand that we're not dumb. And I'm not saying you're not dumb. Obviously, the people that are attracted to the haters channel are smarter than the average wrestling fan, but I digress. In the compound phrase vanilla midget, we also learn something from the shadow of the phrase vanilla midget. So, that would suggest two things. Number one, that a wrestler can be good if they are not vanilla, or a wrestler can be good if they are vanilla, but they are not a midget, right? You only need one of the two requirements to be a viable option. For example, Randy Orton, for the large part of his career, now he's had some good moments, right? Like the psychopath Randy Orton was really good. But Randy Orton is vanilla, right? I mean, let's be honest. Let's say it like it is. I like Randy Orton as much as the next guy because he makes up for it with his awesome moves and like the storyline and the booking that he's received, but he is pretty vanilla. Like if you compare Randy Orton to Jeff Hardy, right? Jeff Hardy is a much more compelling wrestler than Randy Orton, right? Matt Hardy is a much more compelling wrestler than, than Randy Orton. Edge and Christian are much more compelling wrestlers than Orton, right? That's why Edge w was the one that cut the promos for Rated RKO for the most part, right? Randy Orton is pretty vanilla, right? But that's fine. He understands this, right? But the difference is, Randy Orton is not a midget, right? Randy Orton meets the minimum height, weight, and size requirements to be a main eventer, right? He looks like a main eventer, and he has for the vast majority of his career, right? Then, we have people that are midgets, but they're not vanilla, right? The best example of this, of course, is Eddie Guerrero, and in my opinion, Rey Mysterio, who, I know what you're thinking, Rey Mysterio doesn't cut good promos, Rey Mysterio cuts amazing promos, if you adjust for the fact that he's a luchador. When was the last time a luchador fucking said anything that you remember? Exactly. You can't even think of a... Think of like five... Like name five luchador promos. I can think of the one that Kalisto bombed before he got fired. And that's about it. Rey Mysterio is pretty good at promos. And Rey Mysterio speaks English on like 99% of the luchadors. Like compare Rey Mysterio's presence to that of Andrade. Andrade is like this idiot, right? He, he wears stylish clothing and just walks around taking off his sunglasses and smiling. He doesn't know what the fuck he's smiling at. I, he's been in America for like 10 years. He still doesn't speak English. Right? He doesn't understand. Like People say something and he just speaks in broken English. And people are like, oh, that's weird. So he's, he's a great example of a vanilla midget, right? Oh, hater, but Andrade's not a midget. Not, not anymore, maybe. But in the past, he was a vanilla midget. You put Andrade next to, next to Scott Steiner. You put Andrade next to Scott Hall. You put him next to Kevin Nash and he's visibly like two feet shorter than all of them. Like Kevin Nash would just big boot this guy, hit the jackknife on him and pin him with one foot. But anyways, I digress. The point is, you have Eddie Guerrero, you have Rey Mysterio. Midget, but not vanilla. Definitely Eddie Guerrero, at the very least, is not, is not vanilla, right? He is exciting. He's entertaining, right? Now, in WCW, he was a vanilla midget because he was just Eddie Guerrero, one of the 1900 luchadors that they had that they would interchange. Oh, Psychosis. Oh, La Parca. Eddie Guerrero. El Hijo de Pendejo. El Hijo de Pinche Coño. You know what I'm saying? All these El Hijos and Juniors that nobody cares about, right? Eddie Guerrero started shining when he went to WWE. Why? Because he embraced the fact that he's a midget, but he was like, oh, I'm not going to be vanilla anymore, right? Here's another example of a vanilla non-midget. Hardcore Holly. Definitely not a midget, uh, considered by many to be one of the toughest wrestlers of all time, right? But he is vanilla, he's boring, right? Let's be real. Then we have people that hit a sweet spot, right? Let's take the example of one of my personal favorites, Booker T or King Booker, right? Booker T, definitely not a midget. He obviously meets the height, weight, and size requirements. And Booker T, extremely charismatic, extremely 
uh, captivating as a performer. You want to watch him wrestle. You want to watch him cut a promo. Incredible comedic timing. Great promo skills. Booker T rules, right? So the point that Kevin Nash was making and has been making this entire time is quite simple, right? We don't need vanilla midgets because they're boring. They offer nothing. According to Nash, there's only two requirements, like I said. Don't be small and have some personality. If you lack personality and you are small, according to Kevin Nash, according to the hater, according to probably Russo, and according to logical convention, you will not draw a dime. Do you understand me? Think about it. Finn Balor is a great example. Finn Balor is a vanilla midget. He is small and he has no personality, right? Um, Damien Priest is vanilla, right? He has no personality, no discernible personality at all. He's just a big guy. First, his gimmick was he's a guy that likes to party and get table service. Then his gimmick became he's just a jobber. Then afterwards, his gimmick became he's part of the Judgment Day, and now he just starts dressing like The Undertaker for no reason. It's kind of weird. But anyways, it is what it is, right? You, at minimum, must have one of the qualities. But to be an excellent wrestler and to be someone that stands out, you need to have both. Right? This is why, no matter how you cut it, there is no way in the blue hell that Randy Orton would ever main event more WrestleManias than Batista if Batista stuck around and took it seriously. Right? Because Batista is neither a midget nor is he vanilla. Right? John Cena is not a midget, is not vanilla. Undertaker, the Undertaker player, he's not, a, he's not a midget and he's definitely not vanilla. Right? All of these people are going to have better careers than someone like Randy Orton, because Randy Orton is fundamentally vanilla. Now, we are in the 21st century. We are, we are told, in a new era of WWE. But before we move on to that bullshit new era that doesn't exist, let's talk about the current era, or, the, or the, I guess the past era, right? We went from vanilla midget to a different category. Vanilla slob, right? Now, all of a sudden, it became flagrant and popular for people to be not only vanilla and have no personalities, but also look like shit. At the very least, motherfucks, at the very least, you could say that, you know, Kevin Nash thought that Chris Benoit was a vanilla midget. Now, I know what the, the neck dudes are thinking. Chris Benoit would put Kevin Nash in a leg lock, he'd drop kick him in the knee. Here's what would happen if Chris Benoit and Kevin Nash fought. Benoit would run, Kevin Nash would punch him in the face, and that'd be the end of that. But anyways, in make-believe land, Chris Benoit's a tough guy, right? And at least, I will give credit to that murderous piece of shit, he did look like a wrestler, right? Eddie Guerrero did look like a wrestler. Jericho, who is definitely not a vanilla midget, but he is a midget, did look like a wrestler. All these guys worked out and looked great, including Rey Mysterio. You can look at Rey Mysterio and compare his physique to that of Sin Cara or Kalisto, right? Rey Mysterio is in much better shape than them both, right? Even now. Like, when Rey Mysterio debuted in SmackDown, he was like Jack. He had like a six-pack and everything. You know, like, what more do you want from this guy? He can't help the fact that he's five foot one. You know what I mean? He at least tried. But, nowadays, people don't even try. So you get people like Sami Zayn, who, in my opinion, have been stealing money from this company for nearly a decade. Sami Zayn will never draw a dime. Kevin Owens will never draw a dime. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, Kevin Owens was a top merch seller at one point. I'm not even sure if that's true, but let's say it was. Let's say it were true. That Kevin Owens was at one point a top merch seller. Doesn't mean shit to me, motherfucks. If you are the top merch seller because you are, are the top merch seller, meaning that you and your attributes have made you a top merch seller, then I got nothing but respect. But if you are the top merch seller... Because Triple H thinks you're a main eventer and he keeps thrusting you into the main event, then that's just a byproduct of the fact that Kevin Owens is on TV every week, right? If you look right now, the last time I checked, Cucks, Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso are both top merch sellers, right? Jay Uso is like number three after Cucky and LA Knight, and Jimmy Uso, whose only shirt is no yeet, right? Jimmy Uso is like a top five, right? Now, what happened here? Are Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso good? And if so, how come their horseshit, colorful shirts back in the day 
didn't put them in the top 10 list. They are in the top 10 list because they are being pushed right now. Once they're stopped, they stop getting pushed, they will not be in the top 10 anymore. LA Knight, for example, is a legitimate top merch seller, right? He was treated like shit, and they had him lose to Bray Wyatt, who, rest in peace, but who LA Knight should be beating clean, right? They had him lose to Bray Wyatt in a Mountain Dew match, and this cocksucker still became a top merch seller. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference between someone that has charisma and, that, and the difference between someone that doesn't have charisma. So, if LA Knight is top two in merch sales, despite never being pushed, really, and Kevin Owens was maybe at some point like a top five merch seller, what is the difference, right? Aside from the fact that Kevin Owens and the likes of Kevin Owens, including Sami Zayn and Gunther and Cesaro and all these jobbers that nobody cares about, the difference is that these guys only sell when they are pushed, right? And the difference is um, LA Knight sells irrespective of being pushed. Even when he's being buried, he sells. But what else is an important distinction between the two? Hint. I've already mentioned in this video. While Cucky Owens is both vanilla, and he's not a midget. I mean, he is. He's like 5'10". So he's, he's a vanilla midget, uh, right? And he's also a vanilla slob. He looks like shit. He's fat. You know what I'm saying? LA Knight is not. LA Knight is neither vanilla nor a midget. And this explains what Kevin Nash has been saying to all of you all along. That the most important qualities to have are size and personality. And nowadays, we push people like fucking MJF and Jungle Boy Jack Perry, who are small men and who, in my opinion, have no personality. Jungle Boy definitely has no personality. MJF, I know people like him because he yells at children, but he's just a Miz ripoff. And quite frankly, he doesn't have the same level of charisma as the Miz. And he never will, right? So, in summation, there are people that are legitimate legends. Now in the Hall of Fame, they're starting to induct people that have done absolutely nothing of note. But in the past, it was people like JBL, six foot six, whatever the fuck he is, big motherfucker, super charismatic, right? Not a vanilla and not a midget. Nowadays, we're starting to induct jobbers. People are already starting to say stupid shit like, when is Cody going to be in the main event? I mean, in the, in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully never, cucks. I know they're going to put him in there now, obviously. But he doesn't deserve it. You know what I mean? Uh, because this push is manufactured, right? The truth is, and most people are too stupid to realize this. The truth is, that if they wanted to, they could have put Sami Zayn in the same position as Cody Rhodes and the reaction would have been the same. If they wanted, they could have taken Sami Zayn, and they could have had him win the Rumble last year and get screwed. Then they could have had him win the Rumble this year, and he would get over, and they could have made him the face. Right? Nothing would have changed. There is nothing in the storyline that Cody Rhodes adds. There is nothing in any Kevin Owens storyline that Kevin Owens adds. You can take Kevin Owens, and replace him with any other boring mid-card heel, right? Since we talk about Kozlov a lot more than we should, you can literally take every feud that Kevin Owens has been in, and you can replace him, maybe not with Kozlov, because Kozlov doesn't speak English, but you can take Kevin Owens, and any feud he's been in, literally, any feud he's been in, and if you replace him with, I don't know, who's like a decent heel from the past, let's say you replace him with Mr. Kennedy, right? Everything would be exactly the same. Everything. If you replaced every heel ever with Mr. Kennedy or Mr. Anderson, it would play out the exact same way. Kevin Owens is the same thing as Mr. Anderson in that his entire character is he's a cocky douchebag. The only difference, of course, is that Mr. Anderson was in good shape, he could cut a promo, and he wasn't fat. So with that being said, ask yourselves, are the people that you like good wrestlers or are they vanilla jobbers? And perhaps worse, are they vanilla slobs? Mother.